You guys are so good at this. I know oh. they have a nice cadence and rhythm with each other, don't they? Gabe's yeah. a pro. He really yeah. is. Yeah. It's really- I, and I love, I love Liz's closing. You know, it's the small and simple things. Because it really, I feel like it just ties it all together at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious. Can I, can I start this one, Jeff and Tammy? Um, I, didn't, I didn't ask this. I, I thought about it. Have you journaled? Do either of you journal? Have you kind of journaled this uh, journey? Yeah. And I, uh, originally, um, I would journal mostly about the really hard times because I wanted to get it out instead of get it out, right? get it out, externalize it rather than shout it out or whatever. And then I would go back and read them and it was all bad. And so then I realized I need to start writing the sweet times. And so I tried to focus more on writing the sweet times so that when I go back and remember, it's like, oh yeah, it wasn't all really bad. There were some really tender and there have been tender times that, um, that you, I can't, you, I think it's the law of opposition is real. The the harder that you're suffering and sorrowful, that much that God gives you to fill up those that space in your heart that's that's so empty after you've experienced loss. And there's been a lot of sweet moments like that that have really made me feel so joyful throughout the years. And so I try I'm trying to focus on right. You ask because you, you might want a book. Out of this, Dave, is that right? Because wouldn't that be great? They'd have a book right there. I think it would be. I think it would be great. I just think you have a lot to offer to share, both professionally, personally, um, your experience together. I I just think that there's a lot that you can, and I know that you can do to share it. But that just popped into my mind. I just wondered if you had been journaling the journey. Another book. Coming Another out. book. I'm working yeah. on a second children's book. Right now. I'm not it's all in the out. stew. Yeah. We can, I'll think of a name for you. I'll pass it on. Uh, <laughs> that's a good yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, oh. Thank you. If you guys get it started, we'll jump on. <laughs> Rex, what came up for you? Yeah, Rex, yeah. what are your thoughts? Uh, this is a really good conversation. I like how you guys really emphasize considering your children in this whole process. And um, because I can imagine a lot of people would maybe not do that, but to really emphasize that is very important Um, because it seems like that's where a lot of the challenges come from is is blending the children together and in your family. Um, You mentioned you guys, did you did you move to a whole new location after you got married? And would you why would you recommend that? I think I have some ideas why, but I'm curious what you would say. Oh, uh, several reasons. Uh, one is, especially if you're blend, if you're stewing your family, each set of children will think that the other children from the other family are being privileged. I mean, that's natural. You have to go out of your way to make sure that they know that they're being fairly treated. They will naturally assume that the others are getting the good deal. And what would be the biggest coup for that would be to live in their house, too. So. That would make the outside children feel uh, like they got the raw end of the deal. Um, but particularly the home, you express yourself. And so the worst thing would be to move into the father's home. But to, to, <laughs> so if I had moved into Jeff's home, it would, would have been, I don't, that, it would have been horrible because Juanita, that was Juanita's home and Juanita's children are living there. And I come in a new, so she takes Mother, the picture I off the house. Do or, things the way I would do things and it's disrupting and hurting them all the time. Redecorating all yeah. that stuff, yeah. All that stuff. I it's not quite as bad if you move into the mother's home, but it's still the best thing is to have a, a new home. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense to me. I like like how you said um it, moving into somebody else's domain in a sense too, that you feel like you're getting the shorter end of the stick and and then at the for the your kids or whoever, the new mom coming in and then like changing things and that's just yeah so much stuff to deal with. It would make more sense just like okay, complete new slate, we're moving into a new place, and we're all gonna make a new home here together. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Even the adult children. Um, I was just talking to someone this earlier this week, and they happened at. I said, "How did the holidays go?" The wife's. Uh, her mother just remarried and she moved into 
the husband's home. And all the children are grown and married and away from home. But when it was the holidays, um, they, this girl I was talking to needed to call and figure out when she could go home to visit her mom. And while she's there with her siblings and they're playing games with this time, just out of the blue, one of his children comes and walks in the door. He's there with all the chill, his kids. And it's just like, it's so completely different. And for her, it was all over again. She doesn't have a home. She doesn't have a child at home to go home to. Everything has changed. Yeah. It's true, right? That is the reality. Everything has changed. Yeah, that can be jarring. I feel I would think for somebody's identity, you know, all everything's new, but you're in somebody else's space and new new customs or things and traditions going on. Yeah. Um, was there anything that um, you did or you would suggest to others to help um, your kids get along when you got uh, when you began the stewing? <laughs> How do you foster those relationships? Great question. One thing that we did was we went to Disneyland. <laughs> it's hard to be unhappy with each other in Disneyland. And actually, that was the first time that I really connected with uh, one of Tammy's uh, sons because he wanted to go on on Space Mountain. You know, So I went with him on Space Mountain, and he loved it so much. And he said, can we go again? And I said, sure. And so we went again. And and we went on that Space Mountain five times in a row before he was had had enough of it. And he just looked at me and he said, Mom, I never have done that. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first time that I really felt like he liked me. <laughs> Man, that's a great memory right there. Great memory. I think yeah. that um, I keep remembering we would try. Okay, Sunday was the worst mm. day of the week. <laughs> Always. Because we had different we Even had different our ways faith doing... is the same. Our beliefs are the same. But the way we observed wow. Sunday was wow. completely different. So in Jeff and Juanita's family, they would stay in their Sunday clothes. It would be their <laughs> nicest meal of the week on nice dishes. They would sing, sing around the, the piano. piano. They never watched television. No music other than wow. church music. Well, my family... We would wear our play clothes under our Sunday clothes and strip down in the car. We'd get on our way home from church. We had cold cereal. I wasn't going to cook. I was going to play with my kids. We had cold cereal or sandwiches, and we just played. And then at the nighttime, we we would watch a movie together. And so that's completely opposite. And the kids are like, we were totally unrighteous or... Or my kids were saying they're all a bunch of prudes. And it was just like, ah, oh, it was so awful. So we decided after several months, you know, on Sunday, you can do whatever you want to do. You, you'll kind of, well, we're all going to go to church. But then after that, it's your choice what you want to do. And um, that was that was the best thing. I, one of the best things we did. And we did that on vacation. On vacation, you can do what you want, you know, you know. Not within, I'm not saying to do things unreasonably, but whatever you do, how you decide to spend your time is totally your choice. And this, this goes, uh, is a solution to a problem when children feel forced to do things with the other family. And they feel, you've got to do this, you have, they're not going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. So just giving the freedom, oh, well, they need a little space, they can go walk, they don't have to do whatever everybody okay so that's kind of our mantra on vacation we're on vacation you can do whatever you want on sunday you can do whatever you want. we do say uh anything you want that's legal <laughs> yeah yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> that's really good advice start making new um new family traditions together um you can observe old family traditions from both families but then create some new ones together. Like my oldest son was serving a, an LDS mission in Wisconsin when and we when we remarried. And so he became a big Green Bay Packer fan and he came home and he got us all sold on the Packers. And you know what? We would hate each other all week, but we'd come together on those big Packer games. <laughs> and 
all cheered for the Packers. Oh. The city, I know. <laughs> Find those joining yeah. pieces. That's great. Disneyland. I, I definitely have a <laughs> A connection there. I'm my whole family's Packer fans except me. I'm the one Bears fan. Oh, so. oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll I'll root for the Packers if they go to like the playoffs and stuff. I don't I'm not that um emotional about it. So <laughs> yeah, but it's good to hear a, a, another uh Green Bay fan. Uh, coming from a Bears fan. Um I really liked your um I really liked your advice about staying out of triangles, especially within families. Just like you need to talk to that person. Don't try to pull me into that. So that's just something that resonated with me that I wanted to say. I did want to ask, um, this really stuck out to me. I thought it was a really fascinating thing to say um, that some people feel really guilty because they don't feel like they love their stepchildren as much as they should. Do you have any, um, suggestions or advice for them or, or something to help them stop feeling guilty <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i i think normalize it is the most important thing just realize that it's okay it's all right if you don't love them as much as your children i i can say that with some of jeff's grandchildren I feel so much love for them like I do for my own child, grandchildren. But there's a lot of them that I don't feel much of a connection to. And it's not that I don't love children. And it's not like I don't want to ever be with them. But there's just not that bond that you have more naturally with blood. Blood is thicker than water. I don't understand how it works, but I just know that it's pretty normal. And if I could just share my own story, I... Uh, I think that there's no title that I covet more than being a father and being a loved father. And so my idea was that I was going to love all of Tammy's children as mm -hmm. much as mine and that uh, I, I was going to be stepping in for Mark in mortality, recognize that they would be with him for eternity, but I would, I would be there. And there was, there was not, not that connection from them back to me. And it was, I felt so upset about it and so hurt. And um, it was to the point, and uh, we had a good therapist. We've gone to a therapist uh -huh. for 17 years now. So he's helped us a lot. And, wow. And he said, when I was talking like this, he said, uh, Jeff, you already have eight children that adore you. You don't need these children at all. I want you to think of these children as bonus children. They're not your children. They're bonus children. And if they happen to reciprocate, great. Enjoy it. But if they don't, uh, they don't need to. They're bonus children. They're not not your children. And that's helped me a that lot. Is right. okay. And it's helped them a lot, actually. Yes. The more he's kind of pulled back, the more they want it. Next. That was the ironic thing. As soon as I stopped thinking of them as my children, then our relationships got better. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We're kind of letting them come on their own terms a bit. Is that what that was, Jeff? Coming closer? I think so. I, yeah. No, no pressure. pressure. It's the pressure that hurts so much. Yeah. The pressure just makes things difficult. And when you're working so hard to connect, make all these new connections and you know, Jeff's working so hard to provide for all of us, and I'm working so hard to take care of things in the home and relationships and all following up with homework and everything. And when you're working so hard and the children don't respond to what you're giving, the emotional nurturing you're giving out and the um, providing for them that you're providing, it, it hurts. You can let it hurt. And so I love our therapist's suggestion to think of each other's children as bonus children. And and a bonus, sometimes you have a bonus, and sometimes mm -hmm. you don't get a bonus. <laughs> and when you have one, just enjoy it. To keep the That's resentment true. at bay a bit, right? Mm -hmm. What are, um, this is my last question, what are some of the traps or pitfalls that um, stewing or blended families commonly fall into that you could – offer some suggestion to, to at least be aware of or or maybe better avoid or navigate? Well, the, the first misconception is to realize that you will never replace the original family. You know, you have to, it's your own thing. 
you know, uh, what when we were first married, our first Christmas, we thought we were really smart that we went through all, uh, we wrote down all of our Christmas traditions from both families. And then we decided the, the few that we're going to have from each family. So each family would have their, the same number of traditions and everything. And then we had Christmas and everyone hated it. Everyone hated it because they weren't, uh, that we, uh, their favorite tradition we didn't do. We didn't have the little boxes of cereal like we used to have our balloons up. And we just didn't, everybody hated it. And what, what, uh, I would say is that just honor those original families. But what I would have done is let's do these three new things. We're not going to even try to do, we're not going to try to be the original family. We're going to be a new family. And uh, that's what I would say. Well, and, and I think one of the hardest times is ho our holidays. Yeah. The holidays suck. I don't, think, I'll be honest. I don't think I'll ever really love Christmas again, ever since my husband died. I mean, there's times that are sweet, but the overall, when you've got your husband or your wife and your children together and it's your family, it's your, it's your holiday. And it's, it never feels like that for 20 22 years now, it's not felt like that. Now, wow. this Christmas, however, this Christmas, however, Tammy went with her children yeah. and grandchildren. I went with my children and grandchildren, and we each had the best Christmas ever. Mm -hmm. So that uh, sometime, I wish we would have learned that. It took us 17 that's, years. That's 17 another, years. it took us a while to learn that one, but like it's okay. <laughs> It's okay for me to go and do a vacation or something with my children and Jeff to do the same with his. And we felt like so much of the time has been spent trying to create this new family. And we had so many children at home. You can understand why, right? And and maybe we just could have relaxed a little bit better and had more freedom to not feel like we had to have everyone always with us, you know? This uh, brings up a, a something in my mind. Um, so do your children have, do you spend time with the parents of your deceased spouses for holidays? Do their, because they're still their grandkids, do they engage with them at all? Is there any? They've, they've passed away. Okay. Uh, uh, Juanita had one, had her mom, and we did not do things holiday she was in mesa and and we'd see her but on occasion visited. we visited. did visit her yeah. but it wasn't about the holidays it would, uh, mm -hmm. we would go down and we would see her we would see juanita's family there we still do still do and she still does with mark's family still do, does things maybe having a reunion or something together the first year we were married the first <laughs> summer we were married oh gosh I can't tell you how many family reunions we tried we to four. hit. We have four. We have four big family reunions. <laughs> and it was like, oh, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> wow. wow. Families that their idea of a reunion was a one day thing, you know. But uh, for like Juanita's family, it was it was like a five day, mm -hmm. five day event. Wow. Oh, my and so. We can talk about this all day wow. and all night. And, and, wow. and, and you, I missed last question because there were 14 of you coming to stew together. Did you get a new car? Did you have to get a new car? Oh, uh, we only had nine okay. living at home when we got married. So our 12 passenger uh, van would work. Jeff had a 12 Perfect. passenger van, a big, huge white truck. And I came from St. <laughs> George. And the only time you saw 12 passenger vans were when the polygamists came in from Colorado City, right? And so the first time they pulled up in this 12 passenger van, I got a little freaked out, like, no, I'm not going to drive in that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, that's great. Wow. More conservatively with, uh, uh, and so she, when she saw them, too, she was worried. <laughs> You give us some fresh perspectives about even honoring, you know, your own families, like doing the Christmas or a vacation. I mean, that's just, it's beautiful to think outside the box. I think some couples are thinking, oh, we can't possibly do that. We've we got to create our own, right? But thank you for just letting us breathe a sigh of relief and to know that, gosh, we can do both. We can do some stew and, and some separate soups. <laughs> yeah. 
totally. I wish we would have tried this sooner, Liz. It was this Christmas was oh, a really. Nice. Oh. It was just. It's a all an experiment, isn't it? It's all an experiment for all of us. Mm-hmm. Whatever our family dynamics are, good for you. Yeah. yeah. We love you, Jeff. Well, Jeff and Tammy, yeah. thank you. Yeah, this yes. has been Thanks fun. For inviting us. It's so fun to be you guys. And Rex, yeah. you should be a podcast host. You're, 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 you do a good job, Rex. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's why we have it. If, yeah. if the opportunity calls, uh, I'm, I'm always willing to yeah. step in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's <laughs> so good. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, do us a favor and take a few minutes to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel where you can watch this and every episode of the show. When you hit the like button and leave a comment, your feedback helps us improve the show. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend. You can also follow and connect with us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. Be sure to share with us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. If you want even more resources to improve your relationship connection, visit our website at strongermarriage.org where you'll find free workshops, webinars, relationship surveys, and more. Each episode of Stronger Marriage Connection is hosted and sponsored by the Utah Marriage Commission at Utah State University. And finally, a big thanks to our producers, Rex Polanis and Alexis Alcott, and the team at Utah State University. And you, our audience, you make this show possible. The opinions, findings, conclusions, and recommendations expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of the Utah Marriage Commission.